All right, let's get to it. And look, I, I just don't think there's any way to take Scotty this week. I just don't. <laughs> I just think you know, after the Masters, now it's it's he's got a. It, it, there's got to be a distraction in his head somewhere. So I'm actually surprised he's playing, to tell you the truth. But um, yeah, me too. He's playing. He was 11th last year in his only appearance. So yeah, I mean, I said last week what I had to say. If you're going to take someone at four to one, it put big money on it. Last week was the week. I hope you did that. But that's it. Uh, no more. Can't do it. Yeah, for sure. I mean. It's interesting. He didn't. He didn't play for about a month after he won the Masters in 2022. I would assume he's. I would assume he's playing here because I think they can still only miss one elevated event each season. So he probably wants to just play this and you know, again potentially not play in the, in the Wells Fargo if the baby's here. Okay, and then we have Sh- now Shoffley's at ten to one, and I would say this: if he, if you are, if you still have him in one and done, I think this is a good week to take him. Um, but he's ten to one. And I know, um, I know you're, you're not going to go down that road too often, and I'm not going to do that either. I think there are some other options, but look, in his first uh, three appearances here, he was only five under par, and then hadn't played here in uh, a couple of years until last year, signature event. He finished fourth at 15 under par. He's red hot. He's the hottest player basically out there without winning, yep. um, and that's the trick. Is that again? You just have to keep dealing with the fact that. He hasn't won, and he's ten to one. Yeah, I'm definitely not betting him. I, I, you know, I, you, you can use him in one and done. I don't think this is anywhere close to the best spot for Xander in one and done. I think there will be better spots down the road. So he's not even. He's been in, in signature events. So me. what do you, th- what are you thinking about? Uh, I mean, just the. I don't. I, I'd rather have him on a different type of golf course. Again, oh. I think he can win a, on a course like okay. this. But I think something where his his driver makes a bigger difference. Um, would make more sense and you know again i don't n- not opposed to using him in a signature event i even might i mean I, I think i think wells fargo you know in, in a few weeks is a better fit for Xander, okay so um, i'll be i'll be saving him uh, uh rory is uh, by the way rory's no longer the second choice rory is now tied with uh oberg uh ludwig at 12 to 1 and rory of course was uh fined for not playing last year so mm-hmm. i can't imagine this is going to be a good week to take him because he like didn't want to play here, and I could see based on his he's only played here twice, and his best was a forty first. So I guess he doesn't like the golf course, and it's not and it's not like he's playing well anyway. Uh, Oberg uh, will be playing here, of course, for the first time, and uh, he does have a couple of runner ups uh, over his last seven, which are all top twenty fives, and those runner ups were a pebble, a signature event. And last week at the Masters, so I'm de- I, I I definitely have Oberg as a one and done finalist for me because I haven't taken him yet, yep. and he's definitely one of my top three finalists. Yeah, I think I think Oberg's more likely to win this than Rory. Um, there are some there are some serious Rory to live rumors out there. I don't know if what? you caught those. Yeah, I guess I Come guess it was kind of going it was kind of going around in the media. At Augusta, and then there was a report from some um, no like British. That's, I don't know that if it's a newspaper or a tablet. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll see. He's the um, one that's made the yeah. most against it. <laughs> yeah, and he also got screwed over by the PGA Tour after you know defending them for so long. So I, well, I wouldn't blame him for just taking the money at this point. Um, plus, I think, it, plus I think if Rory, if Rory did, yeah, exactly. If Rory did go to live, like that would have to expedite the merger talks. If you know. PJ Tour lost to Rory and Rom. Maybe, um, maybe yeah, that's what he's I, thinking. I, I, I do think uh, Ludwig's interesting this week. You look at again. You mentioned the fact that he came. The guy can obviously win at any golf course, but he's been good on shorter courses. You mentioned okay. his second place at Pebble, and then he won the RSM back in November, which is a short golf course. So, like, yeah, he's an awesome driver, but no, some RSM is that a Georgia? He's been good at. He, somewhere down there, ah. right? Southeast. No, uh, yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah, it's 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 Sea Island, which I think sea is pretty Island. close. Pretty close to uh pretty to, uh, close. Here, so, yeah. I like that. Yeah, I think I think I think Ludwig's definitely that. And he's someone I wouldn't worry about like a masters hangover because he's so young. He's still looking to like, you know, rack up PGA tour wins. He's definitely yep. gonna be motivated. Yeah, again, if this was no signature event, that'd be different, but there's a lot of money on on the line here too. So that's why I think yeah. to, to just think that a lot of these guys are coming off the Masters and they're going to be distracted or there's a lot of money on the line. Though they understand what's going on out there. Maybe it'll take them around, but they'll get into it yep. for sure. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, and then we have Cantlay at 14. And if you ever think of taking Patrick Cantlay, there's two spots that you zero in on. And this is one of them, mm -hmm. even though he hasn't yep. won here yet. But he uh, has come as close to winning here as anybody uh, in four appearances. He's been second or third. Uh, that's just amazing, including the last two years. But he only has two top 20s in his last seven and this is as bad as we've seen him play. The good news yeah. is, is that he was 22nd last week, which is okay because Cantlay doesn't have a great resume at, at, at Augusta. That, I think, is actually a positive sign coming into mm -hmm. this event. But again, now what you're talking 14 to 1, mm -hmm. just like Shoffley, and he hasn't won in a few years. Yeah, and Cantlay was also 10th in strokes gain approach last week which is an area he's been okay. struggling. So it was definitely an encouraging master's performance. Like you said, the course history here is awesome. Canley actually opened at 25 to one in some places. And I kind of wish wow. I had hit that. Yeah. I wish that yeah. too. Cause I mean, yeah, even if he was like 20, I'd still be interested, but yeah, 14, 14 is a little light for me for a guy who just, you know, ha hasn't won much recently. And it's, you know, again, it's still just one tournament where he, he's played pretty well. He was struggling pretty badly before that. So at this point, you know, 14 to one's too, too low. Okay, and then we go with Fleetwood and Morikawa at 18-1. to 1. And, you know, I was kind of laughing there uh, over the weekend, saying to myself, I just, I just got to believe Jared is just, like, really furious at himself right now that Max Homa and Colin Morikawa are sitting there right behind Scotty yes. Scheffler. And, oh, yeah. Or right, right by Scotty Scheffler. He <laughs> could have gotten 50-1 to 1 on both of these guys. He usually goes that route. Decided for the first time, nah, I'm just going to go away from my usual uh, model of taking these guys because it's Augusta. I mean, come on. If you're not playing well there, you're not going to play well there. And then everything just changed this past week at Augusta yeah. where, yeah, it doesn't yeah. matter if you didn't play well there. Now, maybe, the, by the way, maybe the weather had a lot to do with that uh, because the weather really sucked. Because um, what we saw on Sunday should have been what we would have saw the rest of the week. Yeah. We saw a little bit better golf, a little bit easier scoring. But those first few rounds, especially Friday, I mean, it was brutally bad. So, yeah, I just I was thinking of you, no question. <laughs> uh, but here's the problem with Morikawa, and that is the fact that, yeah, he's got a top 10. Hasn't really played all that great here. He's made all his cuts. But it's one top five. And I need a little bit more proof than that now that we're getting him back down to 18 to 1 again. Yeah, you mentioned the weather at Augusta. That was even more interesting with Morikawa because he's usually not a good wind player, but he, he did play well in the wind at Augusta. Um, I don't know. Morikawa is interesting to me this week because I've always thought this is a course where he should play well at and he should win at because, again, it is an accuracy course. There's less emphasis on driving, more emphasis on iron play, and that kind of fits Morikawa's game. So um, he's another guy. I, I think Morikawa and Fleetwood opened um, at around, like, you know, 25, 28 to 1 even, and they, they've been – bet down um this definitely too short for fleetwood for me i can't believe he's 18 to 1 um you know morikawa i think you know, if you can get him at, at 20 22 would be an interesting bet but um i didn't quite get to him at 18 yeah uh i was i i, I when i was taking a look at um at, at uh, fleetwood I, I i like him more as a if i'm going to use him on a one and done I would take the chance this week, maybe, but the odds, like you, that's the thing I'm a little bit concerned with. I, I agree with yeah. you. Um, he's been okay here. Uh, he's been fine. Uh, he has three top 25s out of four, a 10th place a couple years ago, 15th last year. And uh, he's trending really well. And he, 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 he played really strong over the weekend at Augusta. Um, he has nine top 15s in his last 14 events worldwide. Three top fives to run her up in a win. But now it's the big boys again. It's the signature event. And even though he played well out of the Masters with the big boys last week, can he do it again? We, we're, we see with Fleetwood, we, we, we do believe that once he's able to get that win, especially if it's in a big event, then who knows what he can become. But yep. Until that happens, do you want to keep taking a chance on him, or is it better to just let him win that one first and then just go ahead and follow him up later? So, 
but yeah, yeah if, if he wins at 18 to one, I don't feel like I'm missing anything. You know, if he was 30, 35 to one, I'd even consider betting him yeah. this week. Cause it is a, it is a good course fit. He's coming in, in good form. Um, but you know, we'll, we'll get to Wyndham Clark. You, you can't tell me Tommy Fleetwood is almost twice as likely to win this event as Wyndham Clark. Yeah. Come on. I, once again, <laughs> I, I don't know what's going on there with some of these odds, but that's what we're going to try to take advantage of. And so when we take a look at, uh, the next players at 22 to one. Now Fitzpatrick, the defending champ and Homa 22 to one. Now Fitzpatrick, yes, defending champ and all that, but winning back to back unlikely, I would think. And he's not been good in the signature events, by the way, miscut, mm-hmm. miscut 58. So that's, that, that's, that takes me away from that. Those comb- that combination. And by the way, he's missed a cut three times here as well. So it was, it was unexpected that he did what he did last year. Uh, nobody expected him to win that to win last year. And he did. So I don't, I don't think I could see it back to back home. On the other hand, is going to be my top <clears throat> pick. And <throat> I know he doesn't have a course history here, but I don't, you know what? Who cares? Uh, he didn't have a course history at Augusta either. So I'm not worried about that. I like the way that he's trending both with his game now coming off the third place finish and also the fact that uh, he's, he's, he's gotten better in each of the signature events too. Um, so uh, I think this is a good week to take him based on the fact that, uh, again, if you want to compare him to some of the players we just talked to, I think he's getting pretty decent odds. Yeah, I'll never argue against uh, betting Max Homa to win it, you know, something like 22 to 1. I think he's a guy I definitely have always said if he's in the mix on, on Sunday, I believe in his ability to get it done. He, I, I will say, I worry a little bit about like a master's hangover, and hangover is probably a good uh, word to use. I don't know if you caught his post round interview on Sunday, but he ba- basically said he was going to get hammered on Sunday night because he hadn't hadn't drank in a while uh, leading up to his master's prep. So, um, We'll, we'll see what kind of shape he's in uh, come Thursday morning. Should should be fine by then. And again, I, I think he's definitely capable of, of winning this as long as uh, his head's in the right spot. All right. And then you have Zalatoris Cam Young at 25 to 1. And uh, we start with uh, your top pick. And, you know, I, I, I'm pretty sure, I'm not positive, but I'm pretty sure he was my one in, he was my one and done pick last year here. And he was very disappointing last year after that third place finish in his first appearance. So interesting that you're, you're taking him as your top pick here, but he's had two good back-to-back weeks. Uh, he was going really well there for uh, a, a little bit at Augusta, and all of a sudden that weather just destroyed any chance he had. And it who knows what it could have happened if Cameron Young didn't have to deal with the weather at Augusta this past week. So, yeah, so I do like the, the way he's coming in. Uh, and Zalatoris, it was nice to see him get back into – uh, the positive um, trend after uh, mm-hmm. a little bit of a lull. Uh, so he now has four top 15s in his last six. You got the runner up thrown in there. Uh, he's trending mm-hmm. well and he's played two signature events. He's finished fourth and second. Yeah. And, you know, I definitely consider both Zal Torres and, and Cameron Young. And I don't know, betting Cameron Young at the same number as Zal Torres, maybe that, that's stupid considering, you know, one, one guy's actually won before and one hasn't. I, <laughs> I, I, re- I really think it's it's Cam Young's time. I really like him this week. Um, you mentioned the fact that he played well here a couple of years ago. He, Cameron Young's just been good on short courses. We talked about, you know, how, how he's more of a bomber, but um, you know, he didn't quite make our top 10 list on short courses, but he's 13th in ball striking on courses under 7,200 yards. As you said, he came third in his debut here. 51st last year, but he, it was it was just bad putting and bad around the green play. He actually uh, gained strokes both off the tee and on approach, so he still hit it well, and he's just hitting it really well coming into this week. Um, ninth at the Masters. He was actually sixth in the field last week in ball striking, so just looking at off the tee and approach play. He's now gained on approach in seven straight events. He's gained off the tee in six of those last seven events. So he's just trending in the right direction. Um, come on, Cam, let's get it, get it done for us. You're, you're well overdue for a win. So that, that makes him a good one and done for you as well. Then I, I, I guess. Yes, he is uh, near the top of my list for one and done. Cause I also don't think he'll be that popular. So I think a lot of people That's are going to be right. like, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to use Cam Young on a shorter course like you're this. Right. I'd rather use him on the Bombers track. So he's um, Cam, Cameron Young's probably my top uh, one and done pick right now. We'll, we'll see what happens wow. over the next couple of days. Uh, and, and by the way, a, a good example of that was, uh, wh- where was that that he probably should have won the Malnati event? Where was that? Uh, that was Valspar. Yep. And that's he, not an event he, that you would expect a big power hitter to perform well. Right. 
So he played well at um, the Cognizant Classic. You know, the old Honda came fourth there. That's a short golf course. Yep. So all right. So next up, we've got Wyndham, Sibu Kim at thirty to one. So yeah, and and at least Wyndham's thirty to one coming off of uh, you know a couple of you know pretty mediocre mm-hmm. performances and. Who yeah. knows? I mean, everybody's going to talk about the injury, even though he says he's ha- fine. Uh, who knows? But yeah, it's uh, it it hasn't been all that great the last couple of spots. Um, he has made all his cuts here, but his best finish was 29th last year, um, which is actually really when he started to play better anyway. So I don't really care about those other ones. Yeah, um, the good thing about it, he's 30 to one. But I just yeah. I wouldn't really uh, myself. I, I would not take him this week, but. Hey, you know what? Uh, if one of us has him at, at those numbers, uh, which you have him, great. Uh, Siwoo Kim, I don't know what he's doing at 30 to 1, along with uh, yeah. Wyndham Clark. That number is definitely got to eliminate any chance that you would think you would have to take Siwoo Kim. He has made 11 right. straight cuts. He was runner up in 2018, but he has three missed cuts in his last five appearances, including a 33rd and a 42nd. So he's not particularly played well here lately, and yet Wyndham Clark is getting the same odds. So yeah, in that respect, <laughs> there's no denying which player to take. Yeah, I mean, not not much analysis needed with Wyndham. I mean, we wouldn't we said he was a you know kind of a bad course fit at Pebble Beach, and he wins. So like, I just I'm gonna take a guy who has won this much at thirty to one. Um, yeah, it, it's interesting too that like you said, his course history isn't good here. But the fact that he's played each of the five, each of the past five years here, where you know it wasn't an elevated event for for what four of those, like that that tells me he he likes the course. I think like oh, I here all those times, so he, he must like the course. And again, we we've said this a bunch of times. He's just a much better player now than he was, you know, in those previous five years. So I don't really care about the history being bad. Um, yeah, and see, Boo was a guy I liked heading into the week. Like I was hoping to get like a fifty or sixty to one on him. Because he is hitting it well, um, he's a guy. Sibu's a guy who's won at two other Pete Dye courses. This is a Pete Dye course. Uh, okay. Sibu won at the Players and at the Amex. Those are two other Pete Dye courses. So I, I like Sibu this week, but thirty to one is just absurd. All right, and then we've got the Gala Henley Spieth Lowry at thirty-five to one, and we both have a player here. Uh, and, and you have Lowry, and we've talked the last couple of years that this is, you would think Lowry, he, this is a good course for him. He's had good history here before. You would think he'd probably get a win here at some at some point. He's got three yep. top tens, two top fives out of five, out of six, excuse me. And the only thing is, is he's just trending in the wrong direction. That scares me a little bit, but he's only played one signature event. That was Bay Hill, and he finished third. And then the other player that is in my picks, believe it or not, is I'm taking Jordan Spieth. And I had no idea uh, I was taking him until I saw the 35 to 1. And I was like, what? That's, 35 that's to 1? So that's why I'm taking him. The guy has played here six times. He has he's finished 12th or better five times. He has a runner-up <clears> and a win in his last two years. Two years ago when he won, I think it was two years when he won, yes, the previous week at the Masters, missed the cut. So I don't care that he missed the cut last week. He is a horse for a course player, and that's why I'm taking him this week as one of my picks. That's it. It's the only reason. Hey, I'm cool. You know, I'm a, I'm a value better. Um, if you think 35 to 1 is too big a number on speed, and it probably is considering his course history. Even just looking back through his career, like, he's not a guy that necessarily trends well into wins. They just sort of pop up out of nowhere as his win at this event a couple years ago. Yep did um plus remember he played he hit it well at, at valero you know we, we talked about his um off the team and approach numbers were really good just two starts ago so that makes sense to me yeah lauer's a guy i've I, I know i've bet him at this course multiple times i think it's a good fit for him Lowry was 43rd at the masters last week but he led the field in stroke skiing approach he was the the best player wow. on approach at the masters and that that's really a continuation of how he's hit the ball all season just look at in this entire field, which again is you know the best players on the PGA Tour this year, he's fifth best in approach. He's thirty first best off the tee. He's tenth best in strokes gained total. So he's having a really good season. Um, he's eighth in course history at Harbor Town. He's third in that um, ball striking on short courses that we looked at. So this is just a good course fit for Lowry and a guy who's just playing well coming in. Uh, the other two players, the Gala, uh, fifth last year, but he's trending in the wrong direction. So that's kind of why I'm staying away. 
Uh, Henley, though, I came really close to taking, but it was just the odds that I was unsure about in a signature event. That's all, but I came yeah. really close to taking him. 19th last year was one of his better finishes. He's, he's, he was actually fourth over at Bay Hill, uh, so that was um, uh, you know impressive enough. Um, so, yeah, so but yeah, taking Henley in a signature event, I don't know. <laughs> if he was 50 to 1, 45 to 1, I would have grabbed him, but I just can't take him at 35 yeah. to 1. Yeah, Henley's actually third in my model for the week. So, like, all the numbers make sense. He's just a guy I just I just don't trust to close the deal, especially in, a, in an elevated event. So, uh, Burns at 40, Finau, Kim, and Thomas, 45. McCarthy, uh, Connor's also 45. I was thinking of McCarthy until I looked up, like, two hours later or, no, overnight, and saw he went from 65 to 45 to yep. 1. I was like, What? So I could not take Denny McCarthy at forty-five to one, but I, I I do understand if people wanted to take him, or maybe the, hey, if you got him at sixty-five to one, more power to you. Um, but the only thing that really he has showing is that okay, he's you would think he would fit the golf course well with his game, mm -hmm. um, and he's coming off his hottest performance maybe of his career. Uh, so I, I but forty-five to one that was just too much for me. Uh, JT at forty-five to one, it's a nice number for JT. But I just couldn't do it. I had other bargains that I was going to grab. And then the f one of them who I'm going to take, who's also on my list, is Brian Harmon. So I'm nice. taking Harmon at 45 to 1. He's on your list and your stats. Um, yep. If you check it out, his first – and, and here's what, another thing I like. He's been here 14 times. So, I, so we just talked about the experience of the golf course. Um, in his first 10 appearances, he was a combined 35 over par. In his last four appearances, he's a combined 42 under par. He was seventh last year. And, uh, yeah, I like the combination of experience. He's a major champ. And I'm getting 45 yep. to 1. Yep, Harmon was the last guy off my card. I strongly uh -huh. considered betting him uh, for all the reasons you mentioned. Good course fit has flashed recently. Um, could could definitely see him winning this. 50 to 1. We got Post on Kirk. Cam Davis, and I just picked up Cam Davis in our fantasy league, and I'm taking mm -hmm. him this week. Um, nice. And I like the fact that he's in your stats as well. So uh, if you look at him, he's trending in the right direction. He's played here three times, all top 25s, third and seventh as well. So I think if you're ever thinking of taking Cam Davis, this is a really good week to take him. Uh, Post on I was thinking about because he has he's been hit or miss here. He's missed a cut twice and he's finished in the top 10 three times, including a third place finish in 2022. He's trending back in the right direction, albeit a little slowly. So I was close to taking Post on, but uh, definitely went with Davis. Yeah, I like the Davis pick. I strongly considered him. Um, he's another guy kind of like um, the other Cameron, Cameron Young, who you know, they're both bombers, but they both just played well on shorter golf courses. So, you know, kind of, kind of not what you, not what you think, but that's, that's how it's been. Um, Lucas Glover is a guy I also considered um, just continues to, to pop in the numbers. I look at played well at the masters last week, came 20th um, that followed a 25th at Valero and then 11th at Valspar. He's just consistently gaining, especially on approach. The iron play has been really good. Um, he Glover has a long history here. Um, oh, no, yeah. like great, no great results. Um, I guess you got to go back to 2008. He came in seventh, but otherwise it's a bunch of like 20ths and 30ths, but um, definitely has the, the course experience here. Yeah, I well, same thing with McCarthy. Overnight, 100 to 1. Mm -hmm. Yeah. F then wake up and see 55 to 1. Uh, I just couldn't no, do thanks. it. But I definitely understand why you would want to take him this week. And um, I think he's all the experience, major winner, and he's playing well. So over his last three events. So, yeah, I, I understand it. But what a big – to have that chopped in half, which is too much for yep. me. Other 55-1 to one shots. Uh, Bazoon Hoot may not be a bad idea. He's playing well. Mm -hmm. But Jason Day is another player that I'm taking based on bargain. I'm getting 55-1 to one with Jason Day. And I just think that that's a little bit too generous. I wasn't even thinking of taking him until I saw the number. And I was like, yeah, at 55-1 to one, – I'm not going to pass. Um, I, I, you know, he, he won. We just talked about the Byron Nelson. So, you know, he, he won almost at the same time of year last year. So he knows this is a pretty good uh, uh, seasonal deal for him. But overall, he's at two top tens in the signature events so far. 
and he has had four top 30s out of six appearances, one top 10. Nothing special, nothing great. He's playing okay, nothing great. But again, it's 55 to 1. That's a big number for Jason Day. He just needs to figure out his wardrobe situation. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the baggy <laughs> clothes, I don't know what the deal is. He must be yeah. getting paid pretty well yeah. for it, though. Oh, I'm sure, yep. Um, 60 to 1. You got Taylor Moore, Ben on, and uh, I came close to taking more, actually. Uh, Moore, that kid is uh, starting to play good golf now, and he, he struggled early on in the season, but uh, he's starting to look like the player that he thought he was going to be when the season started. He played here once. That was last year. He finished 11th, and again, the combination of the way he's playing, um, the odds are fine. Obviously, you're getting 60 to 1. So, yeah, so Taylor Moore was somebody that I was uh, looking at, uh, runner-up just a few a few events ago. And, um, yeah, on on the other hand, who actually uh, played pretty well last week, uh, does have a top 10 here, but he's missed mm-hmm. three cuts out of five, uh, eighth at Bay Hill, um, and you're getting 60 to 1. Benny on, we said in the beginning of the year, we kind of think he's going to win, but yeah, maybe his chance of winning was that Sony Open. We'll see. Yeah, I'd be a little surprised if his win comes in an elevated event. Um, so I'm off. I'm off Benny this week. Sung Jay's the guy. I mean, he's is he oh, broken. Sung I don't Jay know. It's like this is. I mean, this should be a great spot for him. Short course, Bermuda course, easily his best surface. Like you know, his his win came, uh, or at least one of his wins came in Florida. Um, but yeah, he's he's just broken at this point. So I, I can't bet him even at 65. Yeah, he has actually combined 31 under par in his last three appearances here. All top 25, seventh last year, but one top uh, 15 since the century. We have yeah, never crazy. seen Sung J.M. struggle this much on tour. So maybe he's decided to change his uh, swing too. Who knows? Um, Brendan Todd was somebody I was thinking at, but not at 65 to 1. I don't know why those odds have dropped all the way down to 65 to one, but Todd was somebody as a long shot. I, I was uh, giving a, a little bit of um, notice to fifth at Bay Hill. Uh, excuse me, fifth uh, last time out a couple of weeks ago, uh, sixth at Bay Hill. So I like that combination. And he was fourth here back in 2015. Um, and Shank at 75 to one. I was looking at him. He was about 190 to one. Uh, so he's come down now to 75 to one. That's uh, getting a little low, but it's still okay yeah. um, because he's playing well. And his last four events, uh, three of those are top 20s, and one of those was a fifth. And he was an impressive 12th last week at Augusta. That was impressive. Um, Hoagie would be my guy in this list, probably not surprisingly. I'm a Hoagie guy. Um, the irons continue to be awesome. Um, he's even putted well lately. What's surprising is he's been horrible at Heritage. Yes. Which again, you think this would be? You think it'd be a good course fit for him? You know, he's a shorter. He, I mean, he he won at Pebble Beach, which I think is a, a decent comp course. But for whatever reason, he has not been good here. Uh, I also my last two picks, my long shot picks, are Keegan Bradley at eighty and Emiliano Grillo at ninety, uh, or Grillo, excuse me, at ninety. So Bradley, I and and really Bradley was all on the odds. I like the fact that I'm getting eighty to one. He's a major winner. 22nd last week was was good for him because he was in a little bit of a rut for a little bit. So maybe that's the peak into him, maybe getting his game back going. Um, and uh, Grillo, I think, is really the interesting long shot because of the, his experience here. In his last three events, he has a seventh last year, a runner-up in uh, 21. Um, I know he hasn't – not on top of his game at all, um, but he was eighth at Bay Hill. And he is coming off a missed cut, okay? Mm-hmm. But he was never going to play well with Augusta anyway, as far as I was concerned. Right. And we just talked also about missing the cut before the before this event is not exactly a bad thing. So at ninety to one, I, I you know I don't think he's a bad long shot. I was thinking a little bit of, of D- Dietrich, only because he's trending so well again. But I just don't know if this is the week to take him at hundred to one because it's a signature event. Yeah, I like the Grio pick. Just looking through his numbers, like there's nothing alarming with how he's hitting the ball. Like he's he's been consistently gaining off the tee. His approach play has has been solid. Around the green has been the problem, which I think tends to be a problem with Grio. But you know he's 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 playing fine. Um, but how about Jaeger down there at 100 to one, kind of getting no respect after just winning a couple of weeks ago. I mean, I'm not taking him this week, but that seems a bit high. Yeah, he's missed a cut both appearances at 11 over par. I'm sure, that has a lot to do with it. Um, you know, it's, I mean, Hughes is playing well, but he's terrible here, too. 
Uh, Svensson, Rick... Svensson's a good bet here. He didn't make my car, but Svensson's a good bet here. My guy, Svensson, he's been playing better lately. Um, I always say you like him on sh- shorter golf courses, so I think one, I think 130 is a pretty nice number for Svensson. Yeah, he's made uh, the cut both appearances high of 626th. And uh, Ricky will find out if uh, last week we'll get him going. Uh, or if it was just because he was playing at Augusta, where he has had good experiences before. So we'll see. He better get his game going. Um, but especially, uh, he's he's got five missed cuts out of seven here. But he was 15th last year in a signature event. So we'll see uh, if Ricky can get his game going again. And I, keep in mind, there's only 68 players. So it's a small field. Right. Well, Gary Woodland is at the bottom. There's at, my guy. At one of the longest shots in the field. <laughs> and he is your long shot pick this week. Hey, listen, I had like five extra units to go around <laughs> or something. So toss it on Gary Woodland. So he, uh, he missed the cut at the Masters. He, he, he has never played well at Augusta, even when he was – Yep at his a game it's just for whatever reason which is surprising because you know longer of course you think he'd be good there but he just hasn't we talked about this though the previous start at houston he gained 8.8 strokes on approach that was the third best approach tournament of his entire career so i mean i, I mean yeah, he's 300 to one he had a good approach outing a couple weeks ago Woodland has, and here's the other thing I like, he has three, like, middling finishes at Heritage, but he's gained strokes putting in all three of them, which is crazy, because Woodland is a bad putter. You look at even this season, like, he's been losing strokes putting almost every tournament, but he's gained strokes putting all three times here, so. Well, he's, he's gained strokes putting again. He's, he's gotten better each three as well, so his results yeah. have gradually gotten better all three of his appearances, so that's a good sign. Yeah, if he can gain strokes putting and find the iron play that he had two weeks ago, like he he could be in the mix. And I know it's been a while, but the guy has won big tournaments before. By the way, what 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 happened to Kevin Kisner? Did he just decide like to become a part time player or something? <laughs> because a couple of years ago, he was still like winning match play, and he was still like right. a player that would okay, yeah, he'd be like a seventy to one long shot each week or a hundred to one at most, and then all of a sudden, like within a year, he's on TV and he's hardly playing. Mean, he must have just I don't yeah. know. I, I guess he retired or semi retired or something. Yeah, right. I mean, he had some he had good finishes in twenty twenty two, twenty twenty three kind of went off the rails, and and now yeah, I think he's he's probably not all in on golf at this point of his life maybe he's getting a good amount of money to be a broadcaster and they're uh, oh, sure he's decided yeah, okay sure. i'm gonna go down that road and yep you know why not all right so there you go the rbc heritage one and duns we've gone over them so we're just to recap um my top three uh, based on who i have available are cantley oberg and fleetwood i am leaning towards oh. oberg uh right now and because uh, I have already, I believe I already used up, um, I know I used up Cam Young already. And I'm not sure if I used up, I don't I don't think I used up Morikawa though. What about you? Yeah, so Cantlay and Oberg for me are also in the mix. I still, I do think Cam Young is my top pick as of now. And I, I think Morikawa I'd consider as well. I, th- I, I think I'm probably going to, probably going to wait on using him just to see some more form you know a longer run of good form but again i do think it's a good course for him um but i, th- I think cam you know, i got i got a gut feel that this is cam seems Young's like peak. it yeah yeah i already i've already used cam young i have not used morikawa yet um and and, and i should should throw in uh harman harman will probably be mm-hmm. like uh i like him a lot mm-hmm. this week too so i should i and and i've i've changed my mind quite a bit from the show to uh the time I have to make the pick. So uh, even if Harmon winds up being my fourth choice right now, he could be my first choice tomorrow. So, um, but yeah, so those are some of the ones and I, I can't like just has to be. Um, but the thing is, who do you think is going to get picked more this week? Can't lay? You think he's going to get most of it? Um, yeah, he, I'm trying to think who else would be more. Popular. I think Oberg's going to get a lot of attention. Probably. Right. Probably, although I do wonder if people will think like they want to save him for more of a bombers course. 
Uh, I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna guess. I'm gonna guess. Cantley is the most popular, but I do think it'll be a pretty spread week. Like no one's gonna be super high owned. Um, but but again, you know, Cantley opened at, at twenty five to one, and he's been bet down to eighteen to one. So that just tells me people have been betting him and like him. And fourteen to one. One and done. Four, yeah, fourteen. Yeah. So yeah, Cant- Cantley is gonna be most popular. Be my guess. Who do you still have available? Because I have I have Lincoln I have Clark. Uh, let's see. I've got Clark, Hovland, Oberg, Cantlay, Harmon, Fleetwood, Fitzpatrick, Morikawa, yeah. uh, Spieth. I think those are all the big names I still have left. How about you? Oh, and I still have Zalatoris left. Yeah. I'm trying to... How about you? Yeah, I'm, I'm logging in quick just to see. I know, like, I know I've used Shuffler. I really haven't used a ton. I used I used Thomas, which you know. Who cares yeah, we point? both used Thomas. <laughs> um, and see. when I used, by the way, when well, I used Shoffle, I used him at like mm-hmm. his worst event of the year. He's like a machine in the top 10 and top yeah. five. When I used him, I used him at, I think, Pebble. And that's mm-hmm. when he was like in the 50s or something like that. That was like his right. only bad yeah. week of the mm-hmm. year. Mm-hmm. So don't you, you know love what? It I, when I, that I, happens? Right. I, I forgot. I, I used Morikawa at Genesis already, so I can't use him. I've used, So the, the big guys I've used are Homa, Morikawa, Scheffler, JT. I used Hideki last week, which was obviously a big disappointment. Um, you still have Wyndham Clark? I got I still have Clark. I, I'm not going to use him here. I, he's a guy I, you know, I think he can win here, but I would rather use him at a bombers course. I think like the um, you know, U.S. Open or PGA Championship could be a good spot for Clark. So you're going to have Cam Young. Who else in your list? In your one and done finalist? No, so I can't use Morikawa. So so I think I'd go Cam Young one. Oberg two, Cantley three. All right, so we both like Cantley and Oberg. You're gonna go with Cam Young, I get, I take it, and likely. And I'm kind of leaning towards Oberg, so we'll see where it goes. I've got uh, Cantley, Oberg, Fleetwood, and Harmon. 